A lot of stuff going on, huh? <laughs> I've said once before, I really like it when you get to come and minister and the people before you use your scriptures. It's so fun. I, I really like that. And then to be here tonight with all that is going on in our world and to have leadership like we have. Have any of you thought about the series that was Friday night and still going? Redeemed from the curse of the law? Do you know that that started back in November? I had to go look. So God set us up through leadership that is led of the Lord, timely, perfect, so that when all of this blew up in the last few weeks and came to America and started causing issue here, if you were here and you listened and you were joined in, you've already been built up in your most holy faith by the Word of God week after week after week. Isn't that amazing? How many of you know what the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 after verse 15, what is that? That's the curse, right? Now, there's a bunch of stuff listed. Brother Moore covered it extremely well. But there's one verse that they keep throwing out in the media talking about this is different, this is different, this is different. But there's a verse in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that said every sickness, every disease that is not listed in this book of the law... Every one of them. I don't care what they make up in the future. I don't care what they name it. I don't care what it is. God made provision for us. And He gave us pastors that let it out, has talked about it, has built us up and encouraged us in it to where now as a church, as a body of Christ, we just got to encourage each other and go, we've already been hearing and God's faithful. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He will be the same tomorrow and every day hereafter. Glory to God. He set us up so well. Now what is Galatians 3.13? Christ redeemed us from all of that stuff that happened in Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting at verse 15, all the way to the end of the chapter, he paid it. Now there's two things that Brother Moore talked about. If, it, if it's listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28 after verse 15, we know one thing is it's part of the curse. And there's no way it's God's will for us to have it. Right? Right? And then we know something else. If it's listed there, it's part of the curse, and God already paid for it. So we've been redeemed from it as if it never happened. Amen? Well, I've, I don't really have anything that's going to seem really new to you, but I just want to encourage you in some Scripture. Amen. Would you go with me to uh, Mark chapter 5? Mark chapter 5 and verse 23 is where we're going to start. I wanted to start with something that Jesus talked about. This is, uh, well, this, let's go back one more. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, when he saw him, he fell at his feet, verse 23, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will, shall live. Verse 24. And Jesus went with him. You know, that blows a whole lot of doctrine all the way out of the water. There's so many times and places that people talk about sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Maybe it's not for today. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Everything except what happened right there. A man comes to him distraught. Go back one verse. He besought him greatly. That's not a, oh, Tommy, would you come with me? 
that's uh, Tommy, I really, I really need you. I need you right now. I got this huge thing going on, and I, I really need you. And if you would just come, my daughter would live. You see, that's a different thing than a casual glance. This man needed the Lord. He needed Jesus. He had faith in him. And Jesus didn't give him a doctrinal answer. He just went. And he came with him. And so, in verse 24, he goes with him and people follow him. Right after that is the woman with the issue of blood. So we're just going to drop down for time's sake and go to verse 35. So he's dealing with the woman with the issue of blood. And she gets healed, steals a healing from Jesus. Isn't that awesome? He had no idea. She just reached out and got her some Jesus healing. And so while he's talking to her about that, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, and he said, your daughter's dead. Why do you trouble the master any further? Now let's stop right there for a minute. Now in society, there'd be a whole lot of other answers going on right after that. But let's look on the next verse what Jesus did. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. That's what we're going to talk about today. Only believe. Don't be afraid. He had a wealth of information, Jesus did, that he could have put out. It's okay, I'm the Son of God. It'll be okay, just come on, we'll go. It's okay, you can walk on my faith. It's okay, you can be afraid. Everybody's in fear. He could have said a bunch of different things right there, but he did not. As soon as he heard it, it probably didn't even hardly get out of their mouth, but what Jesus pounced on fear with everything he had. He said, don't be afraid. Only believe. You know the rest of the story? He, he kind of cast off the crowd that was following him. He took a few of his people with him, and they went up, and he raised the girl from the dead. If you look at uh, Mark's, or I'm sorry, Luke's version of that, he said, fear not, only believe, and she shall be made whole. She shall be made whole. Well, if somebody's dead and you raise them from the dead and you don't fix what ailed them, chances are good <laughs> they're not going to live very long. Something killed her. And so Luke, being a physician, he expounded on it a little bit. And he said that she would be made whole. Now let's go to Mark chapter 9, verse 23. You guys know this story as well. This is the story of the man who had the son that was, uh, had a dumb spirit, that oftentimes he cast him into the fire or into the water and tried to kill him. And Jesus, after the man begged and pleaded and said, hey, I took my child to your disciples. <laughs> they couldn't help him. And Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Verse 24 and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You see, there's two examples of people that had opportunity to waver. And God still stepped in the gap. Jesus, the Son of God, the one who said, My meat is to do the will of the one who sent me. I can of mine own self do nothing, but as I hear, I do. He only did what the Father said. And when fear had opportunity, he jumped in and he said, Fear not, only believe. And then 
he says here, if you can believe. And he said, oh, I can believe, but help me. I have some unbelief. You see, this is just real people going through real trouble with a God who meets them right where they are. And he helps them. This man's child was healed as well. Glory to God. Let's go to 1 Peter. Any of you guys been reading in 1 and 2 Peter? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to start with verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Every time I read this verse, I think of Whit Whitson in Branson. Hi, Whit. He and I for years have kind of jokingly and sometimes seriously given each other the humility series that Brother Moore taught or the humility and healing series. Now, if you haven't listened to it, it is phenomenal. Yes, it, is. it was from EMIC when Brother Moore taught down there. And a better term to describe what it is, is this is pride in you. That's pretty much what the humility series is. It goes over all of the um, I am things and shows you just what you are in you. I am. And then if you don't put the in Christ, I can do all things through Christ. In you, you really can't. And when you try, you find out just how much you can't do. So he and I have passed this back and forth over and over and over. And we joke and we laugh, but it's really helped me. It's helped me so much to just see so many areas that we got to work on because I want the rest of this scripture. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It's one of my favorite scriptures because of the three-letter word, may. You know, when you were in school, <laughs> maybe your teacher didn't do this to you, um, but when I was in school and I wanted to sharpen a pencil or, you know, get up, roam around the room, um, you had to have an excuse. So you dulled the lead on your pencil and you could go sharpen it at the other side of the room. And so you had to raise your hand and go, can I go sharpen my pencil? And your teacher would go, I'm sure you can, but you may not. And then you would ask, teacher, may I go sharpen my pencil? And they would go, yes, you may. That's exactly what this is. The devil wants you to think he's this big roaring lion. That he is all of this projected on a screen that you should just be afraid and run in terror from. But every time I read this verse, I hear a little kid going, Teacher, may I go to the bathroom, please? May I? Can, can, can I, please? Can I? You see, he doesn't have the roar. He isn't the lion. He's been stripped. He's been brought to naught. Our God 
defeated him Amen. on his own turf. He went to the center of the earth and he took the keys of death, of hell, of the grave and he brought them back. And now we have a little devil going, may I hurt you? May I make you sick? May I? But he doesn't have that. How many may nots do I have? Glory to God. You see, the devil wants you to strike in fear at like Tom and Dan and then we're talking about, about this virus. He wants you to just shudder and run at a virus when our God paid the price to redeem us from every sickness, every disease. And he stripped the man that wanted to cause it, took away all of his power and glory, and he's just waiting, buying time for the Father to say it's over and him get thrown into the pit. God is so good to us. Amen. Brother Moore was talking about us being the seed of Abraham. Well, that makes you with Christ. Christ was the seed of Abraham. But you know, it's more than that. The Bible says we were born not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. The Word that's here now and will last forever. The Word that has never changed over time. Amen. You're born, reborn. The minute you believe in Jesus and, and He becomes a part of you, you are now in Him. Amen. And as Christ is or was on this earth and as He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, you're just like Him. You put on the clothes of righteousness. Like Dan was talking about, about the prodigal son. You put on those clothes. You put on the prodigal son came home smelling and stinking. But the dad didn't want anybody to see him that way. So he sends a servant to get the, the nice robe. The one he got when he became a man. And he put that robe on him. So that anybody from a distance didn't see the filth. They didn't see where he had been or where he came from. All they saw was royalty. Robed in the fullness of the Father and the flash of the ring on his hand when he moved it. Because he put him in royal status. Gave him a ring. Put new shoes on his feet. And then he took him home and he had a great big party. Because this son who had all authority is back. And now he's back in the place he should be. We were made to rule and reign in that image. And all of us have sinned and fell short. But oh Jesus, he paid the price. And he lifted you up from the dung heap and he set you with princes. And he gave you all power and authority in the name of Jesus. You now have the power of attorney. Wow. Isn't that amazing? What God has done for us. Wow. Go on down to verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the coronavirus is with other people. The same affliction. You're going to go through a lot of the same stuff other people are going to go through. But you don't have to go through it the same way. You don't have to go through it without hope. You don't have to go through it wondering how you're going to come out on the other side because he said he always causes us to triumph. He sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destruction. 
Jesus was that word. And he became flesh and he walked among men. And the Bible said he went about doing good and healing all. Not most, not some, everyone who was sick or had an infirmity. He went about doing that. Scripture after Scripture in the New Testament that talks about Jesus says He healed every sickness. He healed every disease. Well, I'm sure these are in it. Every covers everything. I like what Brother Moore talked about. One of his friends or somebody he knew that did the study and in-depth on the word all. And when he got through with all of the different things and the stuff with it, he found out it means all. Well, he healed all Amen. who were sick, Amen. all who were oppressed of the devil. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you. He is so good to us. Yes. When you write your notes and you have glasses on, you should write bigger. <laughs> Let's go to Luke chapter 13, verse 1. See, now you're laughing. Now, this is something that's probably going around. I'm sure you've heard it. Um, like they were talking about, about it being judgment or it being this or it being that. So I wanted to read this to you. There were present at the season some that told him, Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Verse 2. And Jesus answering them, he said, Suppose you that the Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such a thing. Verse 3. I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Next verse. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all the men that dwelled in Jerusalem? Verse 5. I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall perish likewise. You see, there's so much junk going on. The people are saying, this one got that because of, this one got that because of, this one got that. You can take the words of Jesus. Jesus said they weren't sinners above the others. Just bad stuff happened. That's why I wanted to go to that verse 9 in 1 Peter, where it talks about knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see, it, it's the same. We were made the same. He's no respecter of persons. <laughs> the, uh, the roaring lion and the fear that that instills. I didn't grow up where I heard it. I hadn't heard a lion roar other than movies or a zoo. And I always figured they were kind of diminished from what the real thing was. And so uh, in the past year, I was sitting in a tree stand in Branson. And somebody has a lion on the other hillside. And early in the morning, it's just starting to turn daylight. And I hear this roar. And he goes through all of the guttural runs. And I'm in a tree stand. I'm pretty sure he's locked up. <laughs> I have a weapon with me that I'm pretty sure would take him down. But in me, I'm going, I wonder if he's locked up. <laughs> and I just wonder if he was motivated. Can I shoot good enough to take that out before he gets to my tree? And I'm looking around and I'm laughing inside because of this scripture about the devil being as a roaring lion. And so I was laughing at me because here I am probably a mile away from where this guy lives, down the hollow, 
And that roar came up the hollow like he could have been at the base of my tree. And I'm rethinking my 12-foot ladder stand. I'm thinking, 12 feet, really? I don't know how big they are. I just know they can probably get to 12 feet. And so I'm laughing. I called my wife afterward and told her, and we laughed about it. But it made that real to me. Before that, it was a scripture. And I really didn't have the experience around any place that I wasn't watching the line behind these big bars and assuming somebody knew what they were doing when they put them there. And so I really didn't have that. And here in this morning, I'm all by myself. It's peaceful. It's quiet. I'm listening for animals walking around. I'm watching the squirrels first climb out of the tree and come down and pitter-patter in the leaves. And then there's this big roar. I think I would have noticed it a lot more had I been in Africa in the bush in the same kind of a setup. But then everything in me went, yeah, but devil, you're defeated. That is what you want me to think. That that I felt in the tree stand for that 30 seconds of going, oh, they still got a lion over there. Oh, I built a house over there by them and they had exotic animals and I didn't know they were still there. And I didn't know you could hear them from a mile away. And so there was a lot of new experiences for me that morning. But it helped me so much with resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. It made it real in me what he wants you to think he is. What he wants to exalt himself to look like. And from a mile away, if he was really that, it might have shook me some. But he's not. My Jesus took all of the bark out of him. And then he lets me practice, as Brother Moore has that song. It's another chance to prove my weapons. Another victory. You see, that's what God gave us. He took all of the fight out of him. And then he lets us practice on him down here. Let's us have his promises. Remember, he's the same. His promises are true. He's faithful with every one of them. Everything he's ever said is going to come to pass or has come to pass. Glory to God. <laughs> Let's go to James chapter 4. And we're just going to read... Verse 7, since I just quoted it to you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, how many times when you hear somebody talk to you, do they say the first half of that? Oh, brother, just resist the devil. He's got to flee. No. Submit yourself to God. Have the robe, have the power, have the authority, have the legal right to the name of Jesus. Amen. Then resist the devil and he'll scurry and flee from you. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. That is the key. It's just like Brother Moore was talking about in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28 verse 1. If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and do his commands and keep them, then all of these blessings will come on you. That's what that scripture is. That scripture is if. Go back to that. They're calling it out right now. James 4, 6. I'm sorry, 4, 7. There you go. If you submit yourself to God... It puts you in a position and a place of authority Amen. under the Godhead, Amen. a joint heir with Jesus. Now you have 
the right and the ability to resist the devil. Amen, and him not go, who are you? Jesus I know. Paul I know. Peter I know. But who are you? You see, the minute we submit ourselves to God, under His authority, seated at the right hand of the Father with Jesus, our brother, talking to our dad. We now have that position in that place. Now we have the ability to go, shut up, devil. Get behind me. You have no place. You see, Jesus had all power, all authority. There we go. Let's go to John. <laughs> um, chapter 12, um, verse 14, I think. Ish. Is that what Dave told me the other day? <laughs> Let's go 14 and 12. And 13. It, yeah, it's 14. Ver, chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. How many of you got a red letter Bible? Okay, put your hands down a minute. How many of you, that's in red? You see, that's Jesus. God gave him all power. He gave him all authority, and he went about doing good, healing all. He went about spoiling all of the plans of the enemy. And then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, or he that submits himself unto God, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto the Father. Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, there's the power of attorney. He just handed it to you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Just in case you missed it, the last verse, it's so awesome that he repeats it a bunch of times. Isn't that amazing? So, so God gave the Son all of this power, all of this authority. And the devil wants you to run in fear every time he opens his mouth. Tom read one of the other scriptures for me, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, strength, might, love, and of a sound mind, or basically we have control of ourselves. A sound mind, we can control it, so we have a choice. God didn't give us that spirit of fear. The devil wants you to walk in it because he's the God of this world and he's got everybody else in fear. But he doesn't. But God didn't give you that spirit. God gave you a new spirit. One born of an incorruptible seed of the Word of God. One born out of Jesus, the Son of God, who was born the Word of God, who had a mandate when He came to earth. He sent His Word and He healed them. He sent His Word and He delivered them from their destruction. And so Jesus, when He got here, He had a mandate from heaven. God set up Adam, and Adam was this man, and he did this, and he called the animals what they were. As God formed them, Adam named them because he was a God of this earth. And he committed high treason. And Satan got that rule, so Jesus had to come to show us what we were originally created to be. To show us how to walk, how to talk, how to act, what we had authority in, Jesus had to come and show it to us. 
And he came and he walked it out on earth. And then he said, whatever I've done in my name, you can do. Not only can you do what I did, but you're going to have more than three years to do it in. So get at it. You're going to be able to do greater works, more than what I was able to do. Because my time was limited. I'm just here for the example. I'm just here to pay the price. I'm just here to redeem you from all of the junk that's happened. Now go. Walk out what I've started. Complete that work. Finish it. Show people how good I really am. Amen. It's the goodness of God like Tom was talking about. It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. It's not browbeating them, telling them they're going to go to hell if they don't change. It's showing them how good he is. Amen. Just like Tom as a child saw a man with the goodness of God on him and thought, I want what that man has. That's what we're supposed to be. Amen. Yes, Amen. we're supposed to laugh more. We're supposed to have a great time. We're supposed to be able to show people in situations that we're not moved. Right. None of this stuff. It doesn't move me. It doesn't matter what the world does or what it thinks. In me. Now the Bible tells us that we're supposed to honor them. The place God gave them. We honor the Lord by honoring what they say. But it doesn't have to change what's inside you. It doesn't have to make you fearful. Um, <laughs> let's see. I have this somewhere. I do have it. There we go. Let's go to Second Chronicles. And we're going to go chapter thir 32, verse 5. Second Chronicles, chapter 32, verse 5. This is uh, King Hezekiah. And... Um, Well, go back to verse 1. 32.1. The king of Assyria had decided that he was going to go after Hezekiah and Jerusalem. He'd already besieged Judah. Now drop down to verse 5. This is what Hezekiah did. He also strengthened himself and built up all the walls that was broken. And he raised up the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. Verse 6. And he set captains of war over the people and he gathered them together to him in the streets of the city, of the gate of the city, and he spoke comfortably. Go to the New American Standard in that, I think it is, in ASB. He spoke encouragingly to them. Now you can go back to the King James. In verse 7, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed. For the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. Verse 8. With him is the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battle. And the people rested in the words of Hezekiah the king. You see, the reason I wanted to show you that <laughs> before Tom had talked about it was today I wanted to show you this is put in the Bible as an example of what should happen. Hezekiah did it right. He did all the natural stuff. He built the walls. He rebuilt the walls. He built the tower. They made darts and shields in abundance. But his faith wasn't in the darts. 
It wasn't in the shield. It wasn't in the walls. His faith was in God. Amen. And he said, go back one verse. <coughs> Nor the multitude that's with him. Because there's more with us than there is with him. Now, go down to verse 20 of that. I told you, you should write bigger when you have glasses on when you take notes. For this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven, verse 21, and the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame. They didn't even have to fight. They did all the natural stuff. They used the wipes. They washed their hands. They sat two seats away from other families. But they didn't even have to fight. God sent an angel. And the angel cleared out all of the mighty men, all of the captains, <laughs> all of the leaders. And so when that king woke up the next day, it was him and a whole bunch of new people. All of the mighty men he was counting on, that he was going to be in the middle of, that was going to protect him, keep him from getting killed, aren't there. And we see just where the king is. Because he just returned in shame. He didn't even try. He didn't even take off and make himself seen. He just tucked his tail and left. Because the Lord God fought for them. He is the same. He's the same yesterday, just like that. He's the same today. And if we'll do the natural stuff, and we'll, we'll go ahead and believe God, not in the natural stuff, we do it because the Bible tells us to. But don't put your trust there. Don't put your trust in the 22nd hand wash. Don't put your trust in somebody else sanitizing something. Put your trust in the mighty hands of an almighty God. Do the things you're supposed to do, but never take your eyes off of Him. He will help you. He will take care of you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go to First John. Got three pages of notes that don't fit in there. Go to First John chapter four, verse fifteen. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and God and he in God. Verse sixteen. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. The next verse. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect 
in love. You see, that is what's going on with so much of the world. They don't know why they're in torment. They don't have the understanding that fear brings it. They don't have the understanding. And he that knoweth not God knoweth not love, for love is of God. So if you don't know God and love God, you can't love so you can't be free from fear. From fear. So the only way that you and I can be free from the fear of all of the junk that's going on in this world is to know the love of God. Not to read it once in a while, not to think about it occasionally, but to know it. To know it the way you know your closest friend. To know it in a way that nobody can shake you. To know it to where no matter what the trial is, no matter what the affliction is, no matter what the test is, you know He's there. You know you're never alone. You know I'm never going to have to deal with one thing in this world without Him being there. And that has to come from here. Remember, He said, um, my peace. Not any peace. The peace of Jesus. He left with you. That's why when the media flies up with all of this stuff and the world tries to shut stuff down and do stuff, you can sit in peace and know the love of God is there. Now you may get a bad report. It says the same affliction that happens in the world will happen. But you can have confidence you can come through it like the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you can come out on the other side after the fiery furnace without the smell of smoke on your clothes. Nothing diminished, nothing lost. The fullness of God. And then, when people ask you what happened, you have a testimony. We were talking earlier about it's not a time to go and preach to them now. But when you come through it, and nobody even noticed you had it. You came through in style. Never missed anything. Never really felt bad, looked bad, sounded bad. You just came out the other side and they said, oh yeah, he had it, but he's okay now. They're going to want to know why. Right. Now is your opportunity. Now is the time for the goodness of God to show in you and on Him. Now's the time you point at Him and you go, my God, He brought me through it. My God sustained me. He strengthened me. He sent people by to build me up when I was about down. But He undergirded me and He helped me. And by His grace and His mercy and His love, I stand here healed and whole. And you know what? He's taking new members every day. If you want to join us, we got membership forms right here. Glory to God. That's what the world needs. Not the, why are you using those? Are you scared? I don't bless anybody. I just flew the other day. And I was so pleased with the people that I saw. All of them acting just as normal as any other flight over the last four or five years. People hugging, shaking hands. I know maybe they're not supposed to. But they weren't in fear. They weren't letting fear rule and dominate who they were. They weren't captivated by it. They all knew it was going on. It was announced over the speaker every little bit. But it didn't change them. That is what the church needs to be. The light on the top of the hill.
Don't put your basket over your light. Let your light shine right now. Let them see the goodness of God. See the glory of God on you. See you walk into the line and somebody talk about something and you not be moved. Something happens and something spills on you. You're not moved. Anything happens, you don't have to be moved. He gave you the keys of the kingdom. And he said, what I have begun in you, I'm going to perform it. I'm going to see to it that you finish. We went through Psalms 91 with Brother Moore the last few weeks. With long life. Long life doesn't mean you get taken out with coronavirus, whatever this one is. Long life means you're going to live and not die. You're going to declare the works of the Lord. You're going to be able to walk into the supermarket without any fear. You're going to be able to walk in and stroll into the, to the doctor if you need to and not be afraid that there's somebody else there. You see, God protects you. Your shield, your buckler is Him. He goes before you. He prepares the way. He'll neutralize every disease in front of you if you'll let Him. That's the God we serve. And it's His love and His love in us that will cancel out fear. Not just in our life, but in those around about us. Not just the ones that we are close to that know us well, but the ones that see you with a smile going through the grocery store line by the little kid with the runny nose. And you have no fear. What, what can man do to you? God paid for it. It's part of Deuteronomy chapter 15, or chapter 28, verse 15 and up. And there's no way God wants you to have it. There's no way God, it's God's will for you to receive it. And the devil may roar. He may scream and yell. Have you ever noticed so many times when somebody's completely wrong how adamant and loud they get? And when you know, you can be calm, confident, quiet. That's the Lord. Glory to God. That's who He is. That is what He's done for us. Praise the Lord. So it's the, the perfected love that casts out all fear. Go to John chapter 14, and I think we're just going to go to verse 27. And I'm going to encourage you in about three or four scriptures, and then I think we'll be ready to close. This is that scripture I was talking about with Jesus. Peace I leave with you. Not just any peace. Jesus said, it's my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. See, that's that power, love, and a sound mind. We didn't get the spirit of fear. We got the power, the love, the sound mind. We can not let our heart be troubled. We can not let us be afraid. We have that control because he gave us that power, that love, the sound mind, the ability to contain it. Go to Psalms 56 verse 9. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back this I know, for God is for me. Verse 10. In God will I praise His word. In the Lord will I praise His word. Verse 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do unto me? Glory to God. I'm going to throw some of these at you so that if you need one, you can latch on to one that bears witness with you. 
Go to Joshua, chapter 1, and we're going to go start at verse 6. I like that it says this so many times in here. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. Glory to God. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Glory to God. There's a couple more down through there, but we'll go ahead and skip those. Look at what David told Solomon in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. And David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do, and do it fear not, <laughs> nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee. He will not forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. <coughs> Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. King David, Joshua, all led by the Spirit of, the God, of God, told their people, encouraged them, be strong, be of a good courage, don't be afraid. God's going to take care of you. God's going to deliver you. God's going to work on your behalf until you finish everything that you were supposed to do. That is our vision. That is what we're supposed to do. Walk out of here without fear. Walk out of here with your robe dusted off. So that when they see you, just like the Father, they see Jesus. They see the goodness of God and go, I don't know what that is. But I want it. Are you taking applications? Can I get one? Glory to God, would you stand with me?